In today's video, we're back with some more updated NHL trade rumors, mostly focusing on last year's Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals. Plus, I found an article that talks about a very interesting trade proposal between the Philadelphia Flyers and the Nashville Predators. We'll discuss all that coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So of course, as I mentioned off the top, we have some trade rumors to discuss today, as well as a trade proposal between the Flyers and the Predators. But first, I want to get started with the Washington Capitals. Now, as we know, they were last year's Stanley Cup champions, but this year they did not make it past the first round. And like many other teams whose season has now come to an end, they are facing a lot of questions heading into the offseason as they face a cap crunch and have a lot of question marks around what their roster is going to look like next year. In many of these cases, some players have to go. They have no choice. They can't keep everybody. Some of them can be let go via free agency, but some players that they would prefer to retain that are, are pending free agents will have to trade other players in order to make room to keep them. Now let's take a look here at the Capitals situation. They do have a fairly long list of RFAs and UFAs and some very key players that require extensions to keep them here beyond next year. So as you can see for their pending unrestricted free agents, the Washington Capitals have four key players there, including Carl Hagelin, who they acquired late in the season uh, of course they got Devonte smith pelly who was the playoff hero one of their big players from their stanley cup run but of course this past year spent a, a lot of time in the minors was put through the waiver wire was unclaimed uh, obviously they signed him to a one-year deal after winning the stanley cup things did not go so well i don't think dsp is going to return to washington i do think his time is up and it's certainly questionable if another nhl team gives him another chance he's had a fair bit of chances already he does have that stanley cup pedigree he showed he could perform in the playoffs but at the same time there's a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of other question marks around this player as well so debatable what happens to him of course brett Connolly has been a very nice addition to the washington capitals he's progressed quite well over the last couple of years and i'm sure the capitals would love to retain him but because of his success and the team's success and the fact that he's been scoring more goals he's going to certainly demand uh, more money for sure of course they have brooks orpic as a pending ufa i believe he's 38 years old defenseman of course uh, you know we went through a buyout before last year he was involved with the trade the avalanche traded to the abs bought out and then of course re-signed a cheaper one-year deal with the capitals i do think his time with the caps is going to come to an end here not sure if he's going to continue playing or not it's not really relevant at this time but i just don't see how the capitals can continue to sign him for another one-year deal unless they move out enough money but they do have enough other younger defensemen to kind of take over i think so we'll see but there's certainly going to be a lot of changes on that blue line uh, involving the capitals at least i think there will be based on what we're hearing here now of course taking a look at their rfas obviously restricted free agents who can be qualified and retained include forward andre burakovsky who certainly had his name mentioned in trade rumors a few different times throughout the year had a bit of a frustrating year of course they got uh, jack of verana who's had a pretty solid year as uh, you know proven to be a pretty decent secondary scorer for them of course they also have forward uh, dimitri yaskin and defenseman christian jew so obviously they have 17 players signed for next year right now for a total of 72.6 million the salary cap's expected to land somewhere between 82 and 83 so that only gives them around you know 10 maybe nine and a half ten million dollars worth of cap space and they have to take care of at least seven out of those eight players or replace them uh, and the other thing with the capitals as well is they're at the maximum number of contracts they have 50 contracts with an organization uh, which is the maximum you're allowed to carry so they don't even have the flexibility to sign any prospects to their entry-level contracts uh, go after any free agents without moving players out so they have no choice here but to make some moves now obviously they technically are at the 50 contract mark now uh, but as we these contracts expire july 1st obviously that's going to lower the amount but if they try to retain the same number of players that they need to fill up their roster that will create some issues unless they have some other guys that are on entry-level deals they're playing in the minors or whatnot uh, or junior that could step in and take some of these roles next year but i guess we'll see 
on that front. But the Capitals are facing a crunch and they have no choice here but to make some moves. The two key players that require contract extensions to stay with the Capitals beyond this coming year. And of course, they don't have to sign them to an extension now, but if they decide they want to retain their services and not let them hit the free agent market the summer after, and that's center iceman Nicholas Backstrom, who's 31 years old, been there a long time, been a big part of that forward group, uh, one of the more productive uh, assist guys in the NHL for the last number of years. And of course, goaltender Braden Holtby, who was their backbone leading them to the Stanley Cup there just last spring. So those two players are big parts of the past. Will they be big parts of the future? Only time will tell. I know Holtby was asked about an extension uh, after their season came to an end, and he said he was very open to that and would certainly love to get an extension in place to the Caps this year. And I'm sure the Capitals would probably like to retain both players, but obviously money is going to talk here, and it's going to be tough to say if they can retain them. So let's take a look at some of the top likely players that they could be moved on from here during the summer. Now, when it comes to the Capitals, it's being speculated that defenseman Matt Niskanen is a prime candidate for a trade. He still has two more years left on his contract at $5.75 million. He has been a pretty steady defenseman for them for the last few years here. Certainly was a big part of their cup run as well, but certainly another player who has, you know, a friendly enough contract. It wouldn't be too difficult to move. Uh, there'd be plenty of interest, I'm sure, if he hit the market on the trade front. Of course, there's always Nicholas Backstrom himself. You have to question whether or not he'll be back. I mean, you have to question whether or not he will be signed to an extension or could the Capitals maybe kind of take a wait and see approach. I really don't think the Capitals are going to be in a position where they're going to consider either rebuilding or retooling or anything while Ovechkin is still going strong. I mean, they have some other guys in their core as well, like John Carlson and Kuznetsov. Even Tom Wilson's a part of that core as well. Uh, you know, if they can get goalie Braden Holtby locked up longer term, which I do think they would really like to do, uh, it's certainly going to create a fact of the core being signed longer term. Uh, you could even throw TJ Oshie in there as well. He's got a fairly long-term contract and has been a productive player for them too. Uh, you know, then they have to kind of surround them with some cheaper contracts to kind of make everything fly. Like Backstrom himself, he's 31 years old now. He'll be 32 by the time the season starts, which means that if they sign him to an extension, he'd be 33 years old when that contract kicks in. Backstrom has still been a fairly productive player. His point totals have come down a little bit since his prime years a few years back, but still putting up excellent point totals. Hard to say exactly what he's going to be looking for on a contract, but I would certainly hope they wouldn't go too long term with a 33-year-old player when that contract kicks in. If they look to do like a six, seven-year term, that's going to put too late into his career and it's certainly going to be problematic down the road. But if they can get him to agree to maybe a three or four year extension and the money is right, if he wants to take the, you know, the right contract to finish his career in Washington, I can see that working out. But at the same time, he would still have some value and they might want to consider moving on from him and making a trade before that value diminishes here too much. We see that happen way too often where NHL teams uh, get kind of too much of a marriage with certain NHL players that they've had success with and then they can't trade them later when their value gets too low and their productivity gets too low. Uh, so debatable. I mean, Kuznetsov is a capable number one center, but you still, you need two solid scoring lines. And if they did trade Backstrom, who would take over the number two center spot? And it depends, I guess, as well, who would they get in return? It's really difficult to say how that would work out, but certainly a, a possibility here that they have to explore this summer, in my opinion. Now, of course, there's a couple other forwards they could look to as well, including Andre Burakovsky, who's been kind of frustrated in Washington, had a frustrating year. He hasn't quite lived up to his full potential. His name surfaced in rumors numerous times in the past year or so. So it certainly could be, instead of signing him, maybe he gets moved. Even Lars Eller, who's been a very steady number three center, has a very team-friendly contract as well at three and a half million, still has three or four years left on his deal. He's certainly the type of player that could be moved out because that would be an easier contract to move, even though it's not really a problem for the salary cap. It's just you have to look at what has value and what's easy to trade to kind of keep other parts of the team together. So certainly is a possibility that that is a tradable contract here as well. In your opinion, who's the most likely members of the Capitals to get moved out? Are they going to be able to obtain some key forwards like Verana and Connolly? Are they going to potentially move out a guy like Backstrom? Or are they going to end up signing him and Holtby to extensions? And just if that's the case, there's just that much more money that has to be moved out. So give me your thoughts and opinions on how the Capitals proceed here during their off season to see how they get this sorted out. Of course, I also mentioned here that I came across a very interesting article uh, from Philly.com regarding a potential trade scenario between the Flyers and the Predators. Now, of course, this is not a rumor saying that they're discussing this. Uh, this is just a trade scenario that they presented here that they feel makes a lot of sense for the Flyers and the Predators to talk about and to consider doing. And I wanted to go through this scenario with you and see what you think. And you can leave your comments and let me know if you think it's something that they should talk about and see or not. So let's take a look here at the key points of the article. 
The article indicates here basically that they feel that a, a trade between the Predators and the Flyers would be great for both clubs. The main parameters around this trade is that it's a P.K. Subban deal for Jacob Voracek on the Flyers so that the Flyers get a stud right shot defenseman and the Predators get some top scoring for their top six that they so greatly need as well. They feel it's going to be a win-win here for both teams. Now, I'm just going to read through some key points of the article here. It says, Fletcher does have a close relationship with Nashville general manager David Poyle. They have known each other for about 47 years and Poyle got his big break in 72 when Fletcher's father, Cliff, hired him as a 22-year-old admin assistant with the expansion Atlanta Flames. Five years later, he made Poyle an assistant GM. Chuck Fletcher and Poyle made a deal at the trade deadline this year as the Flyers sent Wayne Simmons to the Predators for right-winger Ryan Hartman in a fourth-round pick. In addition, Nashville happens to be coached by Peter Laviolette, who has first-hand knowledge of some of the players who he had with the Flyers. Of course, he's the fly former Flyers head coach over there, so he knows many of those guys, especially the ones that have been there a long time, relatively well. Subban will turn 30 on May 13th, has three years left on a contract, has an annual $9 million cap hit, which might scare away many teams. Voracek, who turns 30 on August 15th, has five years remaining on his deal, which has an annual value of 8.25. The team seem like a good match. The Flyers have the cap space and need to upgrade that defense that allowed the third most goals in the NHL this year. The Predators need to improve their offense to score just 2.88 goals per game and a power play that was dead last, clicking at just 12.9% during the season and going 0 for 15 in their first round playoff loss to Dallas. The Preds also might seek a defenseman in the deal and Robert Hag is available. As for Subban, new Flyers coach Elaine Vigneault is a big admirer, but to put his comments in the right context, he was just talking about what Subban brings to a team and Voracek as a potential trading chip was not part of that conversation. He's a dynamic player, Vinny said of Subban on Wednesday. He's got a great skill set and a lot of energy. He's shown he's one of the best defensemen in the NHL and he competes so hard. Subban is coming off a career-worst 31-point season. He played just 63 games because of a suspected back injury and he said the injury won't affect his long-term play. If he is indeed 100% healthy, the Flyers should try to strike a deal. Besides his obvious talent, Subban would help give this team some personality, provide a great on-ice presence, and the ideal and be the ideal mentor for a defense that is long on promise but short on experience. So I must say this article does reference a lot of great points. I do think there's a potential there that this deal would make sense. There's not a great deal of difference between Subban and Voracek's contracts. We're talking three quarters of a million dollars. So the Flyers would have more than enough room to absorb the, the difference there. Of course, Voracek's contract has much more term on it. And depending on how Subban plays over the next few years, will determine what he would get for an extension uh, when that contract runs out here where he's got three years left on it. But I do agree as well that the Flyers could certainly use a top experienced defenseman back there. Guys like Gosses Bear and Provorov really stalled in their development this past year. There was some talk about Gosses Bear possibly being traded. If they brought in a guy like Subban, that would probably heat up those talks. I would think it's a possibility for sure, especially seeing some of their other younger defensemen have some pretty strong development this past year as well. So I would think a Subban for Voracek deal might not be for one for one. We might see a guy like Hag involved in the trade as well. And we might possibly see another deal as a spinoff of that, maybe with a deal for Gosses Bear going out. That's just a guess on my part if this deal will happen. Of course, like I said, this is not a rumor. This is just a scenario that this article is referencing. And I thought it was very interesting and makes a lot of sense. So I wanted to see what all of you out there would think of this trade and see if it's something you feel they should proceed with. As we know, Flyers ownership and upper management certainly seem quite frustrated with how the team has been developing here in the past couple of years. Fired former GM Ron Hextall, brought in Chuck Fletcher. And at this point, we haven't really seen a whole lot of moves. I did trade Wayne Simmons at the deadline, but things have been quieter than many have expected. And I do think this is likely going to be the summer when Fletcher makes more significant changes to kind of leave his mark on the team and really try his best to get the team moving forward. Obviously, if they do trade a guy like Voracek, they will leave a hole in their top six forward group. And they, they could certainly address that via free agency. Uh, that might be a possibility. Maybe they go back and try to bring Wayne Simmons back. That's certainly a possibility. We know things didn't really work out for him in Nashville. Uh, so that might open up the space needed to bring him back. I'm not sure that's exactly what they're going to do, but I think it's a, a possibility they'd at least explore. But there is a lot of free agent wingers out there who can score that they could consider going after here as well. If you're newer to the channel here or you haven't had a chance to catch up on all the latest other NHL trade rumors concerning other teams, I'm going to put a link here to a playlist where you can catch up on all of that. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like before you go as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.